The fun has finally arrived. Remote Raspberry Pi management has never been easier. I'm going to share with you a load of fun that I just ran across this past week, and it has changed my development style. It has really given me a boost and put a smile on my face. So let's take a look. What is the main goal here today? Well, that's to remotely monitor and modify our Raspberry Pi with VS Code. I know I said Raspberry Pi, but this could really be any remote device that is running Linux or even Mac OS that can be SSH'd into. So you can take this as a general way of performing the same type of editing and monitoring with any type of Linux or Unix style device. Let's go ahead and look further. Well, this is easy. Like I said, this is fun. This is easy. All we need to do is to prepare a Raspberry Pi, prepare some VS code, and prepare some aliases in a program called RMate. Let's do it. First step, prepare Raspberry Pi. Ooh, that smells good. You can pick a Raspberry Pi Zero wireless for $10 or a Raspberry Pi 3 for $35. Really, it is up to you. You decide what kind of device you want just so it can run some sort of Linux type of distribution and so that you are able uh, to SSH into that device. What next? Well, I suggest using Diet Pi. Diet Pi touts itself as a lightweight justice for your single board computer. They say they're more than just a minimal image. In fact, and I can testify to this, that they are truly optimized. You can install only the packages you want. If you don't want to install a desktop, you can keep it completely command line interfaced. They give you this very nice little suite of lightweight whiptail menus, kind of like the menus you'd expect to see in BIOS. And they give you really easy configuration settings to adjust. If you want to change it from headless to desktop on startup, it can happen so easily. There's also backup and other type of options. Go ahead and dig into it. Go ahead and install this Diet Pi. Set it up. Next, we want to prepare VS Code. It's free. It's a multi-platform editor. Go crazy with all of the wonderful extensions for this editor. This editor is created by Microsoft. It's built on the Electron platform. It is just marvelous. Okay, once you have that VS Code installed, install the VS Code remote VS Code extension. Now, that extension will be available by clicking on the extension icon, as you can see at the bottom of this slide, and then searching for remote VS Code. Follow the, ext the extension instructions, configure your settings, and you're good to go. Third, prepare aliases and RMate. The program RMate will be installed on your remote device, on your Raspberry Pi in this case. Let's see how this is done. On your development computer, let's first of all add in our Bash profile an alias that will enable us one line command so that we can SSH into our Raspberry Pi, making it all the easier. And you can see the alias that I added right here for SSHing via LAN to my Pi. I could also have a separate alias for SSHing over the internet via WAN, uh, having a port forwarding set up on my router. This is just to give you the basic idea of set up an alias for each particular scenario in each particular device so you can one command SSH into it. Next, on the Raspberry Pi, go to this GitHub Aurora RMate repository. Use, I suggest using the bash command sudo wget and install RMate. Make sure you modify it so that you have permission to execute it and you'll be good to go. This RMate is a wonderful program that's going to facilitate this kind of remote editing. So let's go ahead and look at the last step, which is to add an alias 
on your remote device in the bash rc file that will allow you to use the same command that you would use locally uh, to open files for editing in VS Code, and that is the code command. Anybody who has used v, uh, VS Code before knows that if you type code in the terminal and then the name of a file, it will open it for editing in VS Code. Let's go ahead and see this in action. I bet you're wondering what it's like. So let's go ahead. Here we are in VS Code. I am going to press Control tilde and open up a terminal, and then I'm going to go ahead and type in diet pie and that was my one line command so I can SSH in of course I still have to do the password now I am in my diet pie just like that remoting into the diet pie is just as easy as that next I'm going to go ahead and show you one of the built-in really awesome features of diet pie I'm going to run it right here HTOP and it's going to give me access so I can monitor every single core because my Raspberry Pi 3, that's what I'm using, is a quad core. And you can see I have one, two, three, four different cores represented here. And it's showing me the percentage of usage for each of the cores. Uh, now, if I wanted to, I could run separate processes, dedicated processes on each of those cores. And that's what I like to do sometimes with Node.js since it's a, you know, I can run it as a, a single uh, process and I could run it on a dedicated core. That being said, let me go ahead and jump out of this. And let's go ahead, let me go to the uh, desktop right here. And I have a folder called Node where I have a little Node application in here. Now let's just say that I wanted to edit this. Now this is, again, my Raspberry Pi that I'm remotely accessing. If I wanted to uh, edit the index.js file, for example, I would just do what I normally do, code space, and then index.js and boom it opens up just like that okay I could open up the entire folder if I wanted to I can open up any of these and I can just go ahead and edit it and then save it okay that's what I mean by easy and fun you're using the same environment that you would be used to normally with using VS Code but you can do it now to get into your IOT devices let me know if you want to get into some more detail with this I'd be glad to share more detail of my experience. Share your experiences in the comments. Subscribe if you want to. I really encourage you to, uh, to give me some feedback on this. So thank you very much and have a great day.